We are here with Stephanie K. Steph K. All day on IG. <laughs> so Stephanie is very special to me because we worked together a long time ago to start and it's just evolved in time. And I've watched her journey over the years since our time that we connected and it's been really beautiful. And something that I love about Steph is she is so committed to everybody around her and the work that she does, which, you know, has been one of the things we've discussed as well, which we'll get into. But I wanted to highlight Steph because she's got this incredible journey. She's been competing for years, almost, is it been almost a decade? I had my first show in like 2014, but I was not ready. So I took a healthy break. <laughs> <laughs> I I was so excited, um, but my body was not ready. I was living the lifestyle, but I needed so much muscle, and I didn't know what I was doing. Oh my gosh! Well, I think most of us can relate, especially back in like the 2014, 2015. Yeah. It was like the look was very different, the posing, everything was different. It was <laughs> oh the like twist, and you're like, but you know about your butt cheek, like what was that doing? <laughs> and there was not a lot of information out there about what to do. I remember there was one posing video. It was like Sandy Williamson and this like brunette girl in a yellow posing suit, I think, or a yellow <laughs> come to see it. She's a yellow, like, only a very select few can pull that off and it pass off to you, but that is not, not ideal. Yeah. Well, I, I could do it. I remember that one. Um, I was like obsessed with her, but yes. yellow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I hear you. So yeah, you've been doing this a long time. You've been living this lifestyle. You help other people to support their lifestyles too. And I wanted to interview you about what it means to build more than just a body, give people an idea of how your journey has evolved over the years, over this time, and get your insight to support people who might be listening and struggling or wondering about like their food relationship or body image, boundary setting, people pleasing, those types of things. So okay. let's just start off with what does building more than just a body mean to you? Okay. So it's really, to me, it means like working on your internal puzzle. And by that, I mean like your goals, mindset, mental health, relationships with not only yourself, but others, um, your work life, education, self-talk, and really just having like, what are your values and how do you go about doing that? And the good thing about being a human is we're made to change and grow. And even though those puzzle pieces might change when they all come together and everything fits, it might not be perfect balance, but that's, that's what should reflect on the outside. And it doesn't always look that way. So it's really about feeling at home in your own skin, honestly. Um, so there's always going to be something that you can do to improve upon. If you want to make more money, if you want to grow uh, more muscle, if you want anything, you just have to work for it and figure it out. Like that's really just putting the work. hundred percent. I love how you said internal puzzle too, because there's so many pieces to each of us and you know, when you have a puzzle laid out on the counter, it looks really overwhelming sometimes. Like, how am I going to piece all this together to create the vision I want? Right. That kind of evolves with us, as you said, and you've been able to take a lot of those puzzle pieces and kind of sort them out to be in the the image that you want to create. So can you walk us through like how that philosophy has actually impacted your life and the choices that you make? Okay, so a lot of that stuff I didn't know. Um, you made me do a lot of hard work and digging. Yes, we <laughs> but, did. Yeah, a lot of it. Honestly, I was like, oh my God, why are we talking about that? I don't like this. <laughs> do it. <laughs> but in embracing it and really looking at what was causing the other issues and different behaviors to come up, it was something else, or it could have been something in the past where I just need to work through it, address it, forgive myself, learn that everything doesn't have to be black and white. You don't have to be a product of what's happened in your past. You can grow from it. And that's what I really try to do, but you really helped me with that too. Um, so in that translates to how I work. So I do uh, personal training and nutrition coaching, and I'm able to help other people see in like really I'm not the same level as you at all, but I help them to 
look inside and figure out like, okay, what is causing X, Y, and Z? And if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest with someone or anyone who's trying to help you because you have to know what's truly going on. At the end of the day, you have to know your truth. And a lot of times people don't realize that there's so much more to them than is on the forefront. Does it make sense? Absolutely. Like what meets all the background. Yeah. Yes. There's a lot underneath the surface we don't always see, or maybe we think, oh, it's, I need to be prepping for a competition. I need to be training for this. I need to Mm -hmm. change my diet for, to look a certain way. But when you peel back the layers, there's a lot more happening. And that's something too, like, there's so many people and like, you can't judge what you see off social media. You don't really know what's going on in that person's life. Just like walking through the gym, you might see so many different people in different walks of life and backgrounds, but at the end of the day, usually everyone's there for a purpose to improve upon themselves. I see it all the time, but it doesn't just have to be about the gym. If you're having a bad day, still smile at someone because that could change their whole attitude. Absolutely. And and like, sometimes it helps us too, to see that we make an impact just by smiling at someone, like it makes a difference in their life. And so it sounds like you've been able to take the pain you've experienced or things that you've been through and apply it to helping others in a really powerful way. Yeah, no, honestly, it, that's what I really do love about not just my job, but like life in general, because I really do believe in helping people feel at home in their own skin, because who wants to feel like a stranger in their own body? There's so many people out there who don't have the ability of, or gift of just having a healthy body. Like people can't walk upstairs. Like we take little things like that for um, granted all the time. So it's, I mean, it's important. Yeah, absolutely. And did you have things in your life maybe that influenced you prioritizing your health? Yeah. So I, when I was five, I'm going somewhere with this. You know where I'm going. Um, I do. I yeah. asked I like I didn't know, but I'm like, <laughs> no, I didn't no, no, no. bring it up and you feel uncomfortable sharing, but I no, it's all good. good. And I appreciate that. Like, thank you. Um, <laughs> my dad was in a horrific life altering accident. And he went from being a very active individual. I mean, he did like football coaching. He did research radiology. Um, So he worked with his hands a lot. He was an athlete most of his life. Um, Not professional at all. But (laughs) point being, he's in this life-altering accident that caused his entire body to break. When I say that, he was in a nursing home for, I don't know, maybe nine months. I was five when it happened. And his entire life changed where his wrists refused, his knees were replaced, but he didn't let that stop him from living. He had a paper route for 10 years. So excuses are bull crap. Um, Mm -hmm. And just being able to say, okay, I'm not going to just sit back and let my life pass by. I'm still going to do something. He was in pain every single day and he still got up and four in the morning or earlier and go deliver papers. And he did it because he still was like, I'm still going to work. There's no reason not to. Um, so for that, <laughs> I grew up learning a lesson. I had a dad who didn't have excuses and he didn't let just like life just stop because he could have, he really could have. So perseverance is everything. It is. And you've got that fighting spirit in you. I don't know if that's. I hope so. <laughs> oh, you do. I mean, you've overcome so much. You've faced so much. You've endured a lot. You've had your own challenges. And something you've always done is like, I'm looking at this challenge. And instead of falling under the weight of it, I'm going to address it. You've done that time and time again. Yeah. Big part when I took such a long break from my first show to that next show. Um, I love sharing. I was such a horrible team sport athlete. Like I tried everything and I got most improved (laughs) three years in a row. Like that's like the, okay, good try. So funny. But I also ended up getting most dedicated when I started to do cross country and track. Um, Even though I knew like I wasn't the most coordinated, I was very competitive and I wanted to share sports with my dad. 
he was diehard fan, anything and everything Chicago, but more for his kids. So I love sharing that with him. And so when I started the bodybuilding journey, I mean, like, I would be like, look at this workout I can do on like our old phones, really bad quality. He's like, oh, I see you're changing. That's awesome. So then I started learning more about nutrition. I started cooking for myself, but then I would cook for him too. So like, we always shared that. And after he passed, um, 2016, I wanted to compete so bad, but going to the gym was no longer my safe place because <laughs> I was there, I mean, all the time. So, and it's not a bad thing, but people would say, oh my God, I'm so sorry for your loss. Are you okay? And I was like, nope, nope, can't go there. Everyone knows me. So, well, it seemed like the staff did. So I took a step back and I still would go like just cardio queen, but that was about it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and then I don't know what hit me but I was like you know what I'm still gonna keep going because I I love this lifestyle and my dad wouldn't want me to just stop so I continued with the work I was doing and I mean I took a break from working it was so hard to like just talk and be like my upbeat self <laughs> I'm sorry I was really close to my dad um so that gave me so much to give back to others and a lot of my favorite clients are the ones who we give them more um they're able to go down like in, on the ground and get up and play with their grandkids or their children and just being able to enjoy life yeah I don't know where you're going with that but there you go no I'm so glad you shared that because it's real like that's life you know we love people we lose people we love we experience grief and challenges and don't know exactly where to take ourselves after as well mm -hmm. and I know how hard it is to lose someone and I appreciate you being vulnerable enough to tell that story and absolutely yeah it's it's really sweet because you were, you guys were really close and he had such a big role in this journey and you've continued, like I said, you continuously showed up for yourself, even when it was hard. And, and sometimes showing up also means stepping back or mm -hmm. setting boundaries or communicating needs. And part of our work together was a lot of those things. Also the food. That was so and, yeah. So yeah. Especially when you lose someone, I find it can be especially difficult to set boundaries with family members or loved ones. Yeah. So yeah, I'm curious if you could share more like about how maybe the work we did impacted some of like the habits you have day to day now or the way that you are like living and, and supporting yourself. Absolutely. So um, post my dad passing, no, actually it goes a little bit prior to then. I didn't live in the same state as him. So I used to call family members all the time just to see if he'd want to talk. Cause like sometimes he just, cause he had a lot of pain. So sometimes he would just be sleeping whenever he could. I then didn't realize I started to form relationships and it started to get distorted in my mind where I thought that it seemed like I was calling that person to talk to that person and truly like want to talk to them. But really, I was trying to, I don't, you kind of know where I'm going with this. I would talk, um, try to talk to my dad. But as time passed and he had passed, I maintained those relationships, even though they may not have been the healthiest, it was more like, I have a huge family to make sure everyone is okay. And that's when things got weird. And I was like, what's going on? I forgot who those people, not all my family members are the best. Um, I'm number seven out of eight, but a couple of them were just too much for me. And so I tried to have a relationship with them, but I was like seeing so many red flags. I'm like, that's not, that doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. And so, cause it wasn't. So I, we realized like what I was doing was what I initially was trying to do. And then you taught me something called radical acceptance. And I use that a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a hard one to learn, though. It's I'm not perfect with it still. Obviously, no one's perfect. But that's something you have to continuously practice. 
and you have to accept the situation for what it is and be okay with it and move on. It's kind of right. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of people like mistake acceptance for justification when really acceptance is recognizing all that is and knowing this is what is and being able to look at it, face it and process and, and move forward. Yep. And that's hard because sometimes you don't want to accept that that person is who they are because you might want more for them. You can't force anyone to change. You can only control you and your actions and you cannot force other people to grow or even just change. Maybe they don't want to. And that's their choice, not yours. Absolutely. Yes. And it's like accepting ourselves fully too, Mm -hmm. which is not always easy because we want to accept all these really amazing parts of ourselves, but then like don't look over here. Like what's that shadow you hear over there? (laughs) (laughs) Cue Mufasa. (laughs) Exactly. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I'm glad that you come to that place where you're like accepting so much more. You've practiced that a lot. That's been amazing. And you've since, I mean, experienced a lot of changes even with your bodybuilding journey and with recommitting to that as well. Yeah. So I never wanted to quit um I wanted to try I don't know how to say this hold on give me a second um I didn't necessarily want to stop I you might notice like I haven't been posting a lot on my actual Instagram page but I'm still posting on my story and it's not because I'm ashamed of how I look at all if anything like I'm really loving I'm in a building phase I've never really been comfortable being in a building phase and I'm loving it if I'm being completely honest I just, I didn't like, I expect a lot more for myself and I know I have so much more potential and I wasn't, it wasn't showing up because I haven't built it yet. I'm in the process of working towards that future self of mine. I'm laying the work out right now. So when I cut down, it's going to be awesome. And I don't care how long that takes. I love everything about this lifestyle. It's hard. But that speaks volumes for you as an individual, uh, you as an individual and like anyone who does it, because it does take a lot. It's discipline. It's like showing up for yourself every single day and choosing it. And I think so many times people will be like, oh, you're off season. There's not an off season. I'm building right now. And yeah, I've messed up in the past, but I've learned from it and it post show like a couple times. Okay. Yeah, I go a little crazy, but then, um, with COVID I had such bad health issues and like my body hated me. Like I was in pain so much. I was inflamed and it wasn't because it was eating like a hole. It was just negative reaction. My hormones are all messed up. So from that point, I mean, I was swollen. I just wanted to get back to looking somewhat like myself and so from there okay show show and I was like okay but this is not how I want to look I don't want to look similar to how I looked before I want to take time so I've never been comfortable with being um eating a lot like on purpose Mm -hmm. (laughs) like okay this seems like too much but my body can actually handle it I'm not even doing that much cardio right now so I'm comfortable in a place I never thought was possible. And it's not just the physical, it's the mental space too. I can trust I'm doing what I'm supposed to. So if that number on the scale is going up, I don't care. Like it's frustrating for, but it's not, it's not a day ruiner. It's not, oh my God, what happened? I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I send that information to my coach. He has the data and we move on. That's why you hire a coach. You trust them to get you to where you need to be, but you have to follow the plan. You can ask questions, but at the end of the day, if you're not being honest, they can't guess and and think, okay, is she telling the truth? How is it this working? You have to tell your coach what's going on. Even if you mess up, it's okay to tell them. They might not like to hear that, but they need to know what's going on. That's like if you had someone and they're saying, okay, I'm doing all the work. But you're like, okay, but where's the hiccup? 
Yes. You have to be honest with yourself and the people who are trying to help because you can't just guess. That's exactly right. And like playing that guessing game with ourselves or actually going back to what you said too, about just being honest, like having integrity is what will allow you to grow even more because Mm -hmm. if you're willing to be honest about the good things, we got to be honest about the things that are less than great because that is why you have someone to support you. And you came a long way with your adherence and with being able to trust yourself with foods and with being able to accept this, this journey. So can you share about how like you were, or maybe I should say how changing that relationship with food affected now your approach to this process? Yeah. So, I mean, everyone kind of had, well, I shouldn't say everyone. I had um, a red food or a couple of them. And I love peanut butter, but I would not trust myself at all. Um, even though it could be on my plan, I'd honestly be like scared to have it. They really, excuse me, not have it at all because I was afraid of the cravings that it could cause. And that's like this like urge to go get more. And I'm like, that's not right. And so I was like, I like peanut butter, but I shouldn't, it shouldn't have this power. And this is just an example. And so Literally, I can have peanut butter now. I weigh it out. Literally, a tablespoon is not a heaping tablespoon. It's like (laughs) 16 grams. That's it. And it's good. You enjoy it. Move on. There's no fixation. But it was the connection that I was seeking with that. And taking a pause, moving on from peanut butter, before reaching for anything. And if you're stressed out or if you're experiencing any kind of like loneliness or something, you have to identify like what what you're really what are you looking for? What's that food going to cause for you? Is it connection? You taught me that, and it was. I was looking for connection because peanut butter was like okay. My dad loved it. I loved it. We it's a thing, and it um with being at home by myself. I never expected my boyfriend to eat the way I eat, even though he would do it willingly. I still like cooking for him. I still like baking. I can do all those things and not feel like, okay, am I going to want to have something? If I like to cook and bake, that does not mean I have to eat everything that's there. I don't even have to have it at all. Like, it's okay. Um, I'm actually doing Friendsgiving for tomorrow. I'm cooking everything and I can barely have anything because it's not on my plan. And that's okay. I get to share with other people. Yeah, the um, connection. Yeah. So having trust in yourself and knowing your like actually like identifying how you're feeling and having I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um you're doing great. It sounds it sounds like you're saying identify how you're feeling, learn to trust yourself. Yeah. Honest. And and that exposure, that normalizing of the foods has helped you to actually increase like your trust and belief in yourself yeah because I can be at home by myself if I'm bored I'm not going to the pantry anymore like yeah. that's not a thing <laughs> yeah it's awesome and like the crazy thing to me too is a lot of people will start working with me like this is not possible like I can't imagine a version of me who's not that was me yeah I, getting, I was like I don't know if you'd ever get me to eat peanut butter and not feel like oh my god I have to have it all the time no, yeah. I weigh it out now. Like I get the little cups and I just weigh them out for the week. That's perfect. And that's, and this is something like that's important to notice. This is like these progressions are what help us to get there. It's being willing to build that trust with ourselves mm-hmm. and look at the hard things to look at and actually yeah. make the efforts to heal and change that ultimately give us the freedom or the peace of mind or the ideal relationship with self or others or goals or, or whatever it is we're working on. Like you said, eloquently in the beginning, like it's not just bodybuilding, it's, it's everything. And, and right. when we make those efforts it actually supports us in showing up better in those ways yeah so is there anything else from your journey that you want to share that I didn't ask you about um yeah I'll touch on this don't let other people project their insecurities and their relationships with x y and z whatever it is onto you if you're choosing to do something and it suits you and it's in line with your goals they can figure it out and if they can take like food pushers are so annoying 
just because you want to have something, I don't enjoy it. That does not mean that I'm judging you. If I'm not working, you are not my client. You do you. And like, that's, a, I get this a lot too, like different families, like it could be mine or my boyfriend's, whatever. People think because I work with nutrition and personal training and I live a healthy lifestyle, they call it healthy lifestyle. Um, <laughs> they think I'm always judging. I'm not. If I am not on, you are not my client. I want to just turn off, turn that side of my brain off, hang out and enjoy the time with others. I got that a lot at the beginning with friends when I cut out alcohol. Um, you have a lot of acquaintances, a lot. Once you cut out drinking, your drinking buddies go bye-bye. Mm -hmm. But really it just, it's okay for other people to be uncomfortable with your choices. Mm, how did you come to terms with that and like knowing that that is okay? Um, family events on my boyfriend's side. Um, he comes from a divorced family and one side, not one side, I'd say most of them are pretty good with it. But a few people always ask me about, oh, you don't eat? Is this bad for you? Are you okay? Like, what are you eating now? Because like sometimes you're in building, sometimes you're not. Sometimes it's right after a show and it's Christmas and I'm having a cookie or something or I'm eating whatever I want. And other times I just bring my own food. My food's always been my thing. We've been together for almost seven years. This is not an issue. Deal with it. And they have. And now it's a lot better. That's a amazing. Lot better. Standing it was, up for yourself. It was really hard. It was really uncomfortable, but worth it. So worth it. Well, and you're such a caring individual that I know that that can be difficult when you care so much, you almost want to satisfy those projections of others. Mm -hmm. But then you step back and you're like, if I don't care for me and my goals, like what am I really doing to my family or what am I doing to my values? Right. And that's having enough respect for yourself to stick to your goals and like really it's okay for other people to feel uncomfortable. And that's something they really need to work on because projection is not a good thing. It's like, think about like if a bodybuilder went out to like, I don't know, a dinner with friends. What are you, why are you guys eating when I'm eating? Why would we even be at a restaurant? Like what? That would be so strange. Like that's so actually a really good point. Like we would never be like, oh, you guys should just order like chicken, chicken. and rice yeah. or like whatever. I love how we both went there. Like that's so classic. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, funny. that's a great point. Like the and projection is just a psychological defense mechanism to pr protect the ego. So when and we look at it from that perspective for ourselves, like if I'm projecting or I'm in denial about something or I'm maybe not looking at something in particular, I'm protecting my ego, which is trying to combine like these two different parts of me and make sure I'm like functioning normally and in a functioning society. I said a whole lot there. <laughs> <laughs> But then it's but, like, yeah. if, if, if we also look at other people doing that to us, we can say, okay, maybe this is them protecting some part of them that I don't know about. Maybe they don't even like, cause a lot of times we're not even consciously aware of what no. we're protecting until we look at it. Right. Um, so I'm really glad you brought that part up too. Like not letting other people's views dictate your behavior. Yeah. Cause that's just, it's too much. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so before we end this, what would be something you would want anyone out there struggling to know or hear or maybe walk away with? You're probably not like you're not the only one struggling and whatever you're going through. There's no one that's going through the exact same thing you're going through, but someone could have experienced something similar and it's OK to reach out and ask. And it's also OK to say, hey, you know what? I need to work on me before I can give you an answer because a lot of times people want to know what's going on with you or why you're doing something. And maybe you don't know the exact answer yet. It's okay to take time for yourself, but also it's okay to reach out to others too and just look for help, whether that's internally or externally, whatever it is, do it. Love that. I got to work on me before I give you an answer that I'm taking that one with me personally. You said a lot of really great things, but I love that because 
sometimes we feel like we owe people an answer right away. We don't. Mm -hmm. We can process it first. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for just sharing your journey, your story, and opening up as well. I know that's not always easy to do, but (laughs) you doing that is going to make a big difference. And I appreciate that. And I want people to be able to reach out to you maybe with other questions or to follow you or learn from you. So where can they find you? Um, Instagram, basically. Um, That's the only place I'm really active. I haven't been posting much. It's not that I'm ashamed. I'm just really focused on me. But stories up there. It's your stories are awesome too. They get me hyped. I love it. The way you hype your clients, I'm like, yes, I needed that. (laughs) Are there like random Christmas adventures? I I do I do love that you share everything. (laughs) Um, my Instagram is Steph underscore K underscore all underscore day. Yes. Yeah. I'll put that in the description or anywhere this is and make sure it's on there. Thank you. But I also want to say thank you so much. Honestly, like working with you has, has helped me to be a better individual. And honestly, like the skills that you've helped, like helped me hammer into me have really translated through not just bodybuilding, but like with work, with how I work with my clients and the boundaries I've set have really, really helped. Good. Well, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure for me. Like I, like I said in the beginning, seeing your journey through and through has been awesome. And the maintenance of this connection and relationship is so special to me because I've been able to witness a lot of that, but it's really a testament to your commitment. So thank you for trusting me in your journey. Like that really means so much to me. It's always hard to put it in words, but when people reach out and they trust me with what they're going through, I feel it's mm-hmm. a very valuable, it's something I don't take for granted. So I appreciate Absolutely. You. I just think it was so funny still at Angels in, where were we? Kansas City. Yeah. We didn't even think to take a picture, but. We- I'm so annoyed about that, by the way. <laughs> Same. But, yeah. But we had, but we was like, no, so it moment. was, yeah. Yeah. I'm sad about that still. Well, I'll stop recording this. and I got to ask you something. So don't log (laughs) off, but uh, to everybody listening or watching this, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're curious about what it's like to work with me, you can visit www.celestial.fit. I do have a work with me page there, or you can reach out at celeste.rainsturk at gmail.com. If you have any further questions. And of course my Instagram is at celestial underscore fit. So I invite you guys to check out how you can work with me or just go through some of my free series. I have tons of resources out there for people in their mental health. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So definitely feel free to do that. Thank you guys so much and uh, appreciate you all. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.